two, one. Okay, today we're going to be demonstrating a femur x-ray. The routine views for a femur are going to be an AP and lateral proximal and an AP and lateral distal femur. Uh, the femur being a, a long bone, uh, you do need to include all uh, both joints on all long bones. Uh, and with the femur being as long as it is, it doesn't usually, uh, can't be done on a, a one film for a patient unless it would be a child. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with, uh, for a femur, uh, if you'll remember back when we did the hip x-ray, um, we used a 10 by 12 for the hip. Okay? With the femur and having to have overlap, you need to have one to two inches when you overlap films. Uh, we're going to go to an 11 by 14 so we can get more of the femur uh, on end. The centering actually is going to be the exact same centering as it was for a hip. So the film size is that really the main thing has changed, which is 11 by 14, and it's lengthwise. We're center locked, centered to our film, and then what we're going to do is, as far as centering, is we're going to palpate the as is. It's going to be one to two in, and then three to four down. Now what we, are, we do need to do with the leg again, is we're going to internally rotate it. If the patient can, can do this, uh, 15 to 20 degrees. We are going to shield the opposite side. Okay. As far as marker placement, you have room on the film where you have some light here to the side. You can get your marker placement in. Internally rotating it shows the uh, greater trochanter in the profile. The technical factors is going to be 77 to 81 kV. And again, film size is going to be 11 by 14. <coughs> With the black tag. Okay. All right. So now we're going to make our exposure. This is our AP proximal femur. Okay. The next one we're going to do will change films. I'm going to go ahead and do the proximal uh, frog leg or modified cleats position for the hip. We have the patient if they can bend their knee up for us and drop it out to the side, about 40 to 45 degrees. Our centering again is going to be finding palpating the as is. And we're going to go three to four inches down. And again, we should be, when hand on both sides of the leg, it should be in about the center. Now we are getting more of the femur this way because we're actually getting the diagonal of the, uh, the light field to get as much of the femur as we can. Again, we are going to have shielding to the opposite side. The film size remains the same. Your marker placement, uh, you can put it on the patient, or we do have room on the film that we could put it, or actually even light in the light field at the top of the film, or top of the table. Technical factors stay the same, about 77 to 81 kV. This will show the lesser trochanter into profile, and so this would also be this would be called the modified cleaves or the uh, frog leg. So the next film we're going to do is we're going to have the patient again lay the leg back down flat. Okay, we're going to have to change film size. We're going to use a 14 by 17 lengthwise. Okay, what we want to do now is for the AP, we're going to actually palpate. Let's go ahead and move the patient up. There we go. I'm going to take and palpate the the knee and what I'm trying to do here is I want to put use my light might be the easier way palpating here's the patella approximately half inch below the patella is the joint space so I'm going to put my light there and as you can see I need to be about I need to see about a, the entire joint proximally and distally so if I'm palpating the joint space the film is now about one to two inches below the joint space, so that will be acceptable. So now all I have to do is center back to the film. Now since we're doing, this is the distal part, just like we did for the knee uh, earlier, is that you rotate the leg in a little differently. It's only about five degrees, okay? Because remember, all we're trying to do now is put the uh, intercondyl eminence in the middle of the patella. That's why we want to rotate it three to five degrees here. Okay, so now we're just open, extend our collimation. We have room here on the side for our marker. You're to the skin margins here. 
we can again keep the patient shielded and this will be our AP distal femur. The technical factors will be about 77 to 81 kV uh, using automatic exposure control and this will be our AP femur. Now this, now we're going to do our lateral distal femur. I'm going to remove the shield here. We're going to have the patient roll up onto the right side. Now, a couple ways you can do this. Uh, Bontrager will tell you that you want to have the le the other leg back because it will actually can can cause the patient to over rotate, which I agree it does. But if you're very careful, bring this leg over. You can, if the patient can do it, you actually, I think, see a little more of the femur, is if you have them bring their foot over, as long as you make sure they don't over-rotate. And what I usually do is I palpate the patella, and I rotate them back until the patella, or not, just a little bit more, is perpendicular to the IR. By doing that, I know the leg is still going to be in a lateral position. As you can see the leg sort of curve, what I like to try and do is I actually try to bring the leg back just to make it straight with the body so I can try and get more uh, on the film. We're going to do something similar to what we did before. We're going to palpate the patella. I know a little below that is the joint space. So I want to make sure that again the film is about one inch below the joint space. I'm going to center back up to the film. Okay. And then as long as I go ahead and center to the femur, collimation to the skin margins, and then to the borders up and down, we are going to shield. And then our marker placement, you have a light field here you can get, or you can actually put it on the buck if you want. And we're getting as much of the femur here as we can. We're trying to get that uh, overlap of one to two inches that we need for all uh, when you use two films on one uh, body part. So that's why we're going to do it that way. Now you can have the leg back, bring the leg back for me, and again you can do it that way but I think you actually, uh, it, as long as you're careful, I think you can actually get more of the femur with the patient having the leg over. The key is don't over rotate the leg. Okay, this is our femur x-rays. Uh, 